Welcome to this lesson on vertex form. The vertex form of a quadratic function is a quadratic function in the form f of x equals a and then parentheses x minus h squared plus k. So it's just another form to write your quadratic function. And this form tells you the vertex without you having to use that formula we learned for standard form, negative b over 2a. The vertex will be right here. And it also tells you the axis of symmetry, which of course is always that x coordinate from your vertex. Okay, so let's look at an example of vertex form. So here's an example. And we've seen vertex form before when we were solving by square roots. Most of those were in vertex form. So the domain is all real numbers for any quadratic function because it goes forever in the positive direction and forever in the negative direction for my x values. My range is everything from here up. So from negative 1 up. So y is greater than or equal to negative 1. And it does touch at negative 1, so it is equal. And if you want to write these in interval notation, you can do that too. Remember, use that bracket because it does include negative 1. All right, my axis of symmetry is here at x equals 1, 2, 3, negative 3. And my vertex is here at negative 3 and negative 1. And you see that here. Now, the only thing you have to remember is this value here. You need to change the sign because it is negative. When you take it out of the equation, you need to change it. So right now it's positive. When I take it out, it became a negative 3. This value stays the same. All right, my y-intercept, I can't tell where it is from the graph, so I'm going to substitute in 0 for x to see where it actually is. So let's see, that's 3 squared minus 1. That's 9 minus 1, so 8. So it's up here somewhere. And then my zeros, I can tell where they are right here x equals negative 2 and negative 4. But just so we can always remember we can solve for them, let's go ahead and solve. I'm going to set it equal to 0 and solve by square roots. So I'm going to add that one first. Then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And remember it's plus or minus 1. So I'm going to make two equations. So x equals negative 2. Oops. And x equals a negative 4, which is what we got from our graph. All right, the next one, find the characteristics of the quadratic function and then use those characteristics to sketch the graph. All right, so axis of symmetry is always going to be x equals this number, but change the sign. And the reason we are changing the sign is because in our vertex form, it's opposite of h. That negative is kind of like opposite h. So when we take it out of the equation, we want to change that sign. All right, and then the vertex is going to be this, change the sign, and then this value, our h and our k. All right, let's go ahead and graph that. So let's see, 2, 4. All right, y-intercept, we can plug in 0 for x. So that will be 4 plus 4, so 8. And remember, you can always use the symmetrical point on the other side of your axis of symmetry because parabolas are always symmetrical. 
and it looks like this is going to be opening up and not have any zeros, but let's prove it. Let's use our knowledge of solving and actually prove that this has no real zeros. So I'm going to subtract that 4, take the square root, and right here we have a square root of a negative number. That means there are no real zeros. Now if you want to use an XY table and get some more points, you can. But you can pretty much well see where the parabola is going to be on that one. All right, moving on. The vertex form of a quadratic function can help us determine the transformations of the function. The transformations help us to graph the function. So remember, a parent function is the simplest form of a function. And for quadratics, it's just x squared. And then a transformation means moving or changing that parent function. All right, so let's look at these below. And remember, c can mean any number. So if you want to move a parabola up, you add to the end. So this would move the parabola up to. If you want to move it down, you subtract from the end. So this would move it down 1. If you want to move a parabola right, you subtract inside parentheses. So this would go right 5. And be careful, it is a negative even though it's right. And that goes back to your vertex form. Just like on the vertex, we had to change that sign. Same thing, it's opposite. So even though it says negative, we're really going opposite to the right. And left is plus in the parentheses, so this would be left 6. For a vertical stretch, you're going to be multiplying by a number greater than 1, so 3x squared. That's going to stretch it up and make it a skinny parabola. And then a vertical shrink is going to be a number in between 0 and 1, like 1 fourth, and that's going to flatten out your parabola. And then the last one is to reflect over the x-axis. That's where you multiply by a negative 1 out front. And that flips your parabola upside down. It reflects it. All right, so let's write out the transformations here. So number one, I'm adding in parentheses. That moves it left, so left one. Number two, I have two transformations. I have a vertical stretch, that three, which means it's going to make it a tall, skinny parabola. And then I'm subtracting 5 from the end. That moves it down 5. All right, number 3, I have this vertical shrink. And notice I changed to y here, f of x. Those are interchangeable. It just means the output of the function. And then I'm subtracting 2 inside parentheses. That moves it right 2. All right, pause the video and try four, five, and six by yourself. All right, let's see how we did. Number four, you should have gotten up seven. Five, reflect over the x-axis. And down four. And then six, a vertical stretch that 5, and then left 2. Okay, you can stop the video now and complete your practice. And on your practice, all you're doing is listing the transformations, which we just talked about, and then your axis of symmetry and your vertex. And then at the bottom, you are using your transformations to graph.